The death toll from Hurricane Barrel is rising with fear that will continue as the powerful storm destroys island communities in the Caribbean. The island has been flattened. Um, the reports that are coming out um, show a very, very distressing um, uh, signal. Barrel has left parts of St. Vincent and the Grenadines with no electricity or water. Buildings, homes and boats all torn to pieces. In Barbados, people are struggling to cope with the devastation. If this is this is this is madness. I have never seen this in my 46 years of life. This is madness. The powerful hurricane is making history as the earliest Category 5 storm in the Atlantic hurricane season with unusually warm waters adding fuel to the storm system. Jamaican officials are activating disaster response protocols in anticipation of Wednesday's landfall. They're warning people about life-threatening winds and storm surge. The weeks and the months ahead as the islanders um, try to recover what they can of their lives and livelihoods um, will be a significant challenge for them. I'm Lee Waldman reporting. That small island of Grenada was in the direct path of a massive hurricane. This cell phone video was taken off of Elaine Pesto's balcony. It was nerve-wracking. Pesto says she's in Grenada for work. She says she and other travel agents tried getting off the island before the hurricane hit, but nothing was available, so she was forced to stay. You know, they reassure you that it's going to be fine, everything's going to be fine, but you don't really know if it's going to be fine. According to Pesto, the island completely shut down at 7 p.m. while her hotel made them stay in their rooms after 9 o'clock for safety reasons. The first thing they asked is for us to remove all of our patio furniture, bring it inside, and then um, in some of the buildings, they were going, maintenance was going to come in and actually tape up the glass, um, sliding glass uh, windows. But despite having to endure the storm, Pesto says she's happy she went through it and doesn't want this to stop people from traveling. This was an anomaly of a storm. We know that it's made, you know, all kinds of records or whatever. Um, but I don't want it to deter people to travel because th this is amazing country, amazing people. Um, when we were in St. Lucia, the same thing, just an incredible part of the world. Winds in Jamaica are being told to prepare for life-threatening winds and storm surge. People in our area are concerned about loved ones bracing for the storm. CBS News Philadelphia reporter Kim Hudson spoke with a local chef and restaurant owner. She continues our coverage from Carita's Caribbean Cuisine. I mean, it's kind of nerve-wracking. Carita Matthews is nervous and torn. She's trying to focus on her customers as owner of Carita's Caribbean Cuisine in the Reading Terminal Market while also worrying about her family back home in Jamaica. Right now we're doing WhatsApp and Facebook because calling the lines are jammed. Hurricane Barrel has devastated part of the Caribbean, including Grenada, and is now charging toward her home country. All my employees are Jamaicans, so as you can imagine, everybody has the same kind of thought. Uh, is my family going to be okay? Do they have enough food, water? In between serving customers, Matthews tries to take calls from family. That is, if the connection holds up. Got three phone calls, it keeps cutting off. Still, Matthews tries to give warm and speedy service during the lunch rush. Then, a customer who overheard our interview offered a word of comfort. Mm -hmm. I will post that to my prayer group. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Matthews says the support gives her the courage to keep going. I, you know, I thank everybody who, you know, is praying for us and giving positive energy. And this proud Jamaican restaurant owner is also praying those at home will be safe from Hurricane Barrel. At Reading Terminal Market, Kim Hudson, CBS News, Philadelphia. As Hurricane Barrel churns through the Caribbean Sea, many meteorologists are taking note of its impressive eye. Marshall McPeak explained some of the first with the storm. This is only our second named storm of the season, and it was the earliest we've ever had a Category 4 storm. It was also the earliest to ever get to 150 miles per hour. This storm went from tropical depression to a major hurricane, meaning Category 3 or higher, in only 42 hours. That is really fast. It's the easternmost June hurricane since 1933. So that's been a long time. And the easternmost June major hurricane ever. So a lot of